Hi everyone, we're back for part three. You might remember from the end of part two, I've got a finished PCB and I've now got a base for it to sit in. I'm not going to go through the process of designing this part of the base, mainly because it was done over many days of uh, tweaking and tweaking and rethinking what I wanted for the base. So I will go into Fusion 360 and show you how I constructed it, but I'm not going to do it from start. But we've got the rest of the base to actually work on today, and by the end of this video I hope to have a fully enclosed base for the PCB to sit in that a piece of acrylic can slot in the top. Just having a quick look at what I've done for the base, it's 10mm high and it's got little pegs inside, as you can see here, little poles to line up with the PCB that you would have remembered from video number two. There's also this little kind of uh, sunken area in the base, I won't explain what that is. Obviously I'm using some through hole components and the through hole components has various <laughs> heights of little legs falling through and I know I can trim them back a little bit but at the end of the day I want mechanical stability so I want to be careful how much I trim them. So what I've done is made sure that the bottom is thick enough that those little solder pads will actually fit inside there. So if I put this in place, it's a nice tight fit on purpose, but it clicks in, it's quite solid, and as you can see we've got USB over here, we've got our button which sits quite nicely, sticks out about 2 millimeters. and it's perfect for pushing, and there's also a hole for the LDR. I've also added some little side holders for the acrylic so one of the issues I had with my original base that I made for my kids was the strip was sitting in the middle and the only thing that was holding the acrylic in place was the top piece that had the slot in it. So it meant that the acrylic could actually tilt back and forwards and getting it perfectly straight sometimes was a bit hard. If you knocked it, it would slide over. I wanted to make sure that it was held still. So I put some little holders on the sides here. I've also got some screw holes and I've got some nut holes at the bottom. So the idea is you screw it from the top and the nuts will hold it in place here and it'll give us a nice flush finish on the bottom so there won't be anything sc scratching. Now I did finally find some black screws. They're actually quite hard to find at this length, at least with the Phillips head top. These ones have got a little Allen key. The aim is to have them sit flush with a nut at the bottom. So what we need to fill now, we've got our 10 mil here, for the base. Right. It's 10 millimeter high. We need another 9 mil. And luckily, the acrylic that I'm using is 3 millimeters thick. So the plan is that we want three layers of acrylic. So one, two, and three. Number three being a complete cover that'll have a slot inside it. So it'll kind of look like this with some little screw holes. For the middle two, do a shell, just an outline. And the reason I'm doing that is obviously I want to have it all open inside. I don't want to block the light off so low. So the top I'm going to do in black. I'm going to do one of these in black and I'm going to do one of them in clear. And that way I'll have the option of putting a clear piece in and seeing the light from the side as well, which might look really nice. So I'm going to do all this in Fusion 360. And I'm also going to give you a look at the base construction in Fusion 360. There are a couple of little changes I want to make to the base as well. So I'll do that while I'm in there. So let's jump into Fusion 360. Okay, here we are in Fusion 360 and Here's the base as, the, as an object, a 3D object. Now, when I was constructing the base, I brought my PCB in from Eagle, and you can do that with the Fusion Link tools. This is the way you can visualize what your PCBs look like from Eagle. You, you can't actually do it inside Eagle itself, but there's a, a bridge between Eagle and Fusion 360. So this is the straight PCB just sitting in place. And of course, there's a whole bunch of components I could turn on, you can see the resistors coming in. Uh, here are some pixels. If there isn't actually a, a 3D library for them, it just puts a placeholder based on the size of the footprint. Let's just turn those back off again. So it's pretty invaluable being able to bring the PCB in and then design around it specifically. But I'll turn that back off for now. So there was a couple of things I wanted to do on this base. Uh, one thing I noticed that just from a cleaning up the 3D print point of view, I want to change and that is just this section here that sits around the button. Just having this face sticking out a little bit, it's just a little bit awkward for the printer to print. It's an unnecessary thickness and it just increases travel time. So I'm going to just move that face to line up with the others. 
and I could just uh, grab it and move it. But there's a really nice way of doing a move to snap into place on points in Fusion. So I hit M to go move. I'm in faces mode. And what I could do is go to this point to point move. And I can select the starting point and an ending point and it'll just snap into place. And when I click OK, what you'll notice is it actually forms one piece of geometry from it. So rather than having that in two different sections, it cleans up the join and I get one piece. So that's quite nice. So the other thing I wanted to do was I realized when I change the thickness of the base to be able to have this hole for the solder feet underneath the PCB to sit in that I made the thickness a little bit too thin and if you look at these just grab this one here you'll see that the actual thickness now is quite small and I'm worried about the screw tightening actually breaking through the thickness of the just the screw hole area you can see here you can actually hit I and I can grab both of these and get a height so it's only 0.5 millimeters, so half a mil. It's not really a lot of thickness there. You can see distance, half a mil. So I want to thicken that up. So what I want to do is actually just drop these a little bit. I, I gave lots of leeway for the size of the nut, and that's probably too thick now. So what I want to do is grab all these faces, and I think a mil will be enough for thickness there for strength. You know, it doesn't. It's not load bearing. It doesn't have to hold too much. I'm going to go to my translate. And I'm just going to pull it down and make it 0.5. Okay, so they're the two changes I wanted to make for the base. So that's been done. It's great. I'm just going to save that before I forget. The nice thing about Fusion 360 is every save is a revision. And although all the revisions stored in the cloud because it's a connected application, you can actually go back and revert to previous versions based on revision number, which is very cool. Okay, what I want to do now is make the shape of the rings. So I'm going to just turn off the base for the moment. I'm going to create a new sketch for it. So this is our base sketch that I used to actually build that base and extrude from. I'm going to use this as a basis to build the rings. And the reason I'm not just extruding the outside shell that's there right now, the 2mm shell, is because I need to also include the screw holes in it to lock it in place. I don't necessarily need all four. I might be able to get away with just two of them. So I'm going to use this as a, a starting point, but I'm going to create a new sketch. So I'm going to use that. And I'm going to use this as my outside shell. So if I turn off the base now, you'll see that I've just got this new shell. Turn the base back on. I'm going to grab the screw holes as well from the previous one. So I need to make the inside section. And I don't want it to be too thick because I don't want it to run too far into where the LEDs are going to be sitting, which is this section here. So what I think I'm going to do is grab the outside and what I'm going to do is a sketch and an offset and set it to two millimeters. And that's going to give us the same framing. I should just make it a little bit thicker, set it to three. Okay, so we have three millimeters and now we have our in and outside. And then basically what I want to do is connect the circle to the edge. And I might just start off with one corner for now. So I'm going to create an arc and it's going to be a center point arc. Now we have a little bit of a tab and once we break away all the rest of these lines we'll have something that is strong enough to put there. So I need to do that on the other side. It doesn't have to be exact. I can't remember exactly where I put it to. It'd be nice if it was exact but That'll do. Okay. So that should be all we need for a body. So if I stop that sketch, I'm just going to call it, whoops, didn't mean to double click. Oh well. I'm going to call this ring outline. Okay, to get these parts ready for the laser cutter, I need to remove a whole bunch of these lines because the laser cutter is actually going to try to cut along every line. So it's going to cut this section out and this bit will fall away, which isn't what we want. And there might be an easy way of doing this. I don't know. I haven't found one. But basically, I'm going to just go through and destroy what I've got here by cutting some sections away and then reconnecting back up again. So by taking away some of these lines, it still leaves the control points for them. Better be careful not to take those away. So what I'm going to do is just use a line tool and join these lines back up. 
and Diffusion automatically snaps to the control points, which is great. So now we have an inside and outside cut, and then I can get rid of this hole, because I don't need it. And I can get rid of this hole, because I don't need it. So now I've got cut lines where the laser cutter will cut around here and around and cut the hole out. We'll end up with an outside shell that's going to work quite nicely. Let's go put it inside Lightburn, which is the software I use for my laser cutter, and let's cut some acrylic out. Okay, this is Lightburn. This is my laser cutting software. So I've imported my two DXFs in here, as you can see. I've got the ring, and I've got the top. So what I'm going to do is just place these just to the top left corner. It's set up for an A4 sheet, because my laser cutter can fit an A4 sheet only, which is a bit sad. <laughs> But that's what it is, that's fine. So I want one ring and one top that's going to be out of black. So I'm just going to save this laser signs. I'm going to call it LED sign black. Can't spell. And then I'm going to remove the top and just for now have this one in there and call that. And this will be clear. Let's go and cut this on the laser cutter. Okay, I've got two pieces of scrap I'm going to use. I've got some black which has got matte on one side and gloss on the other. Very hard to tell which one's which when it's got the coating on the top. And I've got a scrap of clear. I'm going to load everything up on the laser and start cutting. Okay, we're nice and noisy. We've got the uh, water cooling on. The laser's ready to go. I've got the black in there right now. As you can see, I've got the black outline here so I just need to turn the laser on it's actually all on right now but this actually turns on or off the ability for the laser to fire so now fire and we literally just go start and we'll watch it cut it goes really not that exciting so the laser software is designed to cut the insides first and then the outsides because obviously the acrylic will shift once it starts being cut. Okay, so that's the black done. Always remember to turn the laser head off so it can't accidentally fire when you're opening up. And here are the two sections, we've got the top and the ring. Let's do the clear. Okay, I've got the clear acrylic in now. I'm going to turn on the laser and I'm going to do a home first, home the head. And off we go. Such an exciting process. Okay, again, off. And there is our inner ring out of proof. Let's go put it all together. Okay, here are our pieces. I need to take the paper off, which is never fun. It doesn't really matter about the paper bits for the, around the holes. I might have got the tolerances around the hole a little bit too tight. I'm not sure. I don't know how strong they're going to be. The paper's really easy to get off the glossy side of the black and quite hard to get off the matte side, the, the way the glue sticks to the acrylic. Bit annoying. As you can see, it's really hard to get off the matte side. Didn't peel off very well. Okay, matte, glossy. It's time to see if this all fits together. So here is the base. This is not a reprinted base, so it's still got the shallow in here and the extra bit sticking out inside. There's no need to reprint it for now. So I'm going to try putting 
the clear down first. Ooh, look at that, it lines up. Because it's going to be closer down to the lights, so it might work quite nicely. So, clear that, and then I'm going to put the the mat down on top. Let's see if this actually works. Whoops. See if I can get a screw all the way through. If it's long enough. Oh, look at that. Almost perfect. It's a tiny little bit out. Let's see if we can... I should have got myself an Allen key. I think two will be good enough for the moment just to hold it together. To give you a good idea of how it looks. Okay. Wow. I wonder if it works. Let's get the USB cable. Well, the lights work on the inside. Do we get any lights on the outside? We get a little bit. But not as much as I was hoping for. But to really see if it works, I guess what we need to do is put something in it. So, I printed this. It took me 10 minutes to print and an hour to clean. What does that look like? Does it click in? Okay, it's a bit, obviously the top's loose right now. It's an unexpected maker logo. Doesn't look great on the blue. And I think I put a little bit too much detail in the logo. But you can see it's definitely working on the edges. Nice. And you can see my fingerprints all over it. So this is not clipping in for some reason. Why is that not clipping in? Might have my base tolerance a little bit wrong. Or maybe it is clipping in, it's just too short. Oh, it's too short. Okay, I don't know what measurement I set it to, but it looks like, yeah, okay. I made it a little bit too narrow. Oh well. <laughs> but there it is. We have a base. You see my fingerprints everywhere. That's why it's lighting up. Because I was just cleaning stuff off with the laser. But it's working. Woohoo! The button doesn't do anything yet. And the LDR doesn't do anything yet. It's just cycling through colours right now. But we have the finished base with a bit of funky colours on the side. I wonder if they will work better. Okay, it's time to get a screwdriver. So let's unscrew this just for a sec. I'm going to move the clear up. I'm going to put the black first and then the clear to see if that works any better. Yep. So they're sticking out just slightly at the bottom. I'll have to raise the 3D print maybe half a mil just to offset that. Is that better on this thing? No, not really. It's about the same. Okay. I mean, you can definitely see the lights on the side. And I think at night time you'll see a bit of a spill. But I could probably adjust that. But there it is. A finished base with <laughs> minus some screws but that's okay and some nuts and that's pretty cool I need to obviously write some more software for it get it to use the LDR to brighten and dull I think this is only running at 30% brightness as well and clearly there's probably maybe too much detail on this or I just haven't cleaned it well enough a bit hard to tell bit hard to tell. It's very cool though. Unexpected maker. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this process, this look into my brain of how I go from an idea to a product. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to check out all my other videos if you are new and I will catch you all later. Bye.